with a bit of luck, these videos are hopefully going to kind of make logical sense. So the progression between from one to two, two to three and so on have so far hopefully made sense and built in a logical order. And what I'm going to attempt to do is to continue that with today's video, which is going to look a little bit more about the sequencing aspect of it. So we've kind of, we've got our first banks of pads. So we've got, obviously we've got all of these sounds already. We've got all these and we sample the break. We've got all these other sounds in. We did some resampling so that we could get some nice um, sort of sound design in. And then we did some sampling that occurred outside. And then we recorded that back in. So kind of, I call that re-resampling. I don't know if that's a term, but that's what I call it. Now, in terms of where we are here, so we've got, effectively, this is the, we've got the full track here. So that gives you pretty much everything that's in that loop at the moment. And we've got other elements, we've got it here. But what that doesn't have is the little element at the end there that uh, that kind of echoes away the this bit, the resampled sort of faded out loop. We've got just the drums, and we've got the drums with the bass line. So we've got most of the things that we're going to need just to create a basic sequence that's going to be relatively entertaining and not too sort of boring to listen to. The only other thing that I don't have that I'm going to want just to kind of help transitions in between the two is I'd like to get a sample of the kick just fading out all on its own, which is quite a nice way to bridge in and out of different points in the track. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to make sure that we've got quantizing on, which is all good. Then into this pad here, I'm just going to record the kick. So there we go, we've just got the kick. All good. In the strawberry settings, I'm going to put the hold on and I want the dub on. Now to make sure that you've got the right tempo, you can kind of have the uh, metronome on there so that you can hear whereabouts on beat that the fades are coming. It's up to you that you can make it spot on, but I mean, it just means if you've got the metronome there, then you know what kind of time signature you're working with. I'm happy enough with that, that's fine. So I'm going to resample that loop. There it is. Fantastic. And I'm going to make it a one shot. So we'll go back to the sequence. Now I don't need that sequence anymore, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to have it over the bass line. In fact, I'll do it over the whole lot. So I'll put it there and then we'll start stripping out samples the way that we have been doing. So I'll do the clear pad. I'm going to get rid of that kick, the hi-hat, the snare, the little kick at the end, the kick with the hi with the uh, open hi-hat. So now we've got just this. Which is quite nice. And what I'd like to do is just drop this kick into there. Dead simple. Problem is, it's quite quiet. I'm going to go back to the sample. I'm just going to boost the volume up a little bit. Now we've looked at these effects before in terms of how we can use them for resampling, but obviously there's a reason why it's called perform on the tab. 
what we can do as well is just use these to make something that's hopefully quite interesting as a standard listen. You can do this in terms of the way that we did the resampling, the re resampling. So record this out to another device if you like. There's various ways to do it. You can obviously do it within Ohm. I'm just going to, obviously, I'm doing a screen record, so I'll capture what it is that I'm recording anyway. But this is just purely for purposes of demonstration, so I'm not too concerned about saving the output of the track.
So just a very quick example, just going through some of these effects. Now, as you'll have noticed, what happens on this pad, for example, you notice that the second half of that, so that second bar, it has this sample here. Once it's triggered, because that's a one shot, so we come over to our edits, because that stem is a one shot, once it starts playing, it's going to carry on playing, it's going to finish to the end, which makes it quite useful for this, because once I've hit it, I can be playing this sample here, look, this sequence. Now I'm back to the drums. Just on their own. But it provides quite a nice little segue. See, so little things like that's quite useful to bear in mind once you start building up. Now, obviously, I just threw this together just to give us a quick demonstration. The performance was relatively poor, nothing too exciting, and some of it was slightly random, let's say, being kind. Obviously, you've got both sets, so there are 16 things to go at. You'll get more practice to them the more that you kind of play with them. Once you've got these things laid out, if you have a variety of different elements, there's nothing to stop you performing effectively a full track sequence just from this. So I literally just wanted to go through that. We'll make another video in the next couple of days going through some other resampling ideas and other sort of bits and pieces and potentially I'm going to look at kind of using it away from just doing screenshots and showing it in the kind of wider universe interacting with some other bits and pieces that I use. But obviously that's for a later date. Hopefully that you enjoyed this video, got something else out of it that was quite useful. Please do like and subscribe, join the Beat Cult Tell a friend to tell a friend all that good stuff that people have to say on YouTube channels. Thanks for watching.